I'm Dustin Skidmore. I'm the Vice President of Fuel Cell Engineering with Plug Power. Fuel cells have several advantages over batteries in electric vehicles, especially when you get to the applications where you have to carry a lot of weight or have a longer range if you have to drive further. We found that especially in uh, delivery vehicles, once the range gets to about 100 miles, the battery becomes very large and also heavy. So they have to reduce the amount of packages and cargo they can carry. But with the fuel cell, once you have the fuel cell system itself, and if you want to extend the range, you only have to add more hydrogen tanks. So it's a much smaller and lighter component to extend the range beyond 100 miles. We've partnered with Renault, and we have a joint venture with them called Hyvea, and we'll be making vehicles together. And those vehicles will be uh, branded as Hyvea, and they will use this 30 kilowatt engine. Those vehicles are now going through testing phases and and, and they'll be available to the public uh, late this year. This 30 kilowatt fuel cell system was designed to fit between the frame rails of a typical delivery truck. And we also uh, wanted to make it easy for our customers to integrate. So we found that in the fuel cell industry, other companies were making fuel cells, but they were really hard to install in trucks. You had to provide a lot of different components. The customer had to figure out how to make it all work together. This thing is a completely self-contained system. So it's got the cooling system, the fuel cell, the DC to DC converter, and everything else you need to turn hydrogen into high voltage electricity. So you can take an electric vehicle, and maybe it's a battery vehicle, you can convert it to fuel cell by adding this fuel cell engine. You add the hydrogen from the hydrogen tanks, and then it's 350 volts DC output power to the truck. It makes it very simple for customers. We're also going through iterations where we'll be taking the components inside this engine and putting them in the engine compartment for future generations. This product's for use in applications like on-road vehicles, such as semis and buses, but we also have a variant of it that can be used in large-scale stationary. That version can be used in a parallel configuration to make systems up to one megawatt. And that would be for things like data centers, warehouse backup, things like that. And then we also have a third application, which is aerospace. And similarly to the uh, stationary program, we use multiple modules to make megawatt scale engines for airplanes. Hi, this is Chuck Carlstrom. I'm the director of Super Cell Stack Engineering. This is a 180 kilowatt stack that's used in our 125 kilowatt system. It's made up of nearly 500 cells and 500 different MEAs and they're all clamped together and strapped using this end hardware. The first key improvement the stack team has made is we've built and tested stack off a new tool that produces the plates. These plates off the new tool reduce the cycle time it takes to make a plate, they reduce the welding time required, the laser cutting time, and also improves the material utilization to make the plate so there's less waste in the stamping process. The second key improvement the stack team has made is we introduced a new press and a new strapping technology. These are larger stacks than we've ever built before, and the 125 kilowatt system contains stacks that have about 500 cells in them. So that's 500 separate plates and MBAs that have to be stacked up and pressed between the plates. The third key area we've made progress is in the testing of our large stacks. We've never made stacks this large, so we needed a new test station to test them. And this test station tests stacks from 10 kilowatts all the way up to 180 kilowatts. This allows us to test the whole dynamic range of the stack and has key control over the stack parameters that are important. That's stack temperature, pressure of the hydrogen and air, pressure of the coolant and flow of the coolant, as well as the relative humidity of those gases. This allows us to map the stack out and determine the best operating condition. Another characteristic of this test station is that it has advanced cell diagnostic techniques, and those could be used to diagnose specific problems within the stack. So if a stack comes back from a field with an issue, we could pinpoint exactly what it is and drive it to the root cause. We could also use those same techniques to evaluate new components in the stack, a new plate design, a new material to prove out, and overall uh, improve the stack performance in many ways. All of our stack test stations here at Plug Power export the power we produce to the grid, so there's nothing wasted. 
All of the work we've been doing in the past year has been to advance the technology for mass manufacturing of the stacks. With the advancements we've made in the stack tooling, we can produce the plates more effectively with lower scrap and reduce cycle time. We can press the stacks more precisely and apply the strapping bands in an automated fashion on the new press, and we could do automated leak checks. All this information too is collected for later traceability. All three of these technologies that we're now incorporating, the new plate designs, the new stack press and clamping, and the new test stations will enable us to produce these metal plate stacks at a higher quality level and a higher quantity than we ever been able to do before.